Hello dear students, today we are going to look into T.S. Eliot's Wasteland, the third section, the Fire Sermon. Of course, the title uh, Fire Sermon of this particular section has been taken from Lord Buddha's uh, Fire Sermon, where he burns each of the senses as the reasons of uh, an absence of salvation or Nirvana. So no Nirvana, no salvation is possible in the Wasteland because no religious belief is uh, possible in the wasteland uh, post-apocalypse. Uh, so this is a space uh, filled with religious symbols, religious spaces, churches, but at the same time it's a world that is devoid of any kind of religious solace or salvation. So the river's tent is broken, the last fingers of leaf clutch and sink into the wet bank, the wind crosses the brown land, unheard, the names are departed, sweet themes run softly till I end my song. So this is from Edmund Senses, the Epithalamia, a nuptial song he wrote for a duke's daughter. So sweet themes run softly till I end my song. Again here there is a imagery of water. The river's tent is broken, the last leaf of uh, fingers of leaf clutch and sink into the wet bank of the river themes where there were the amorous couples. So this particular section, the fire sermon, is a section of uh, illicit uh, romance. The previous section was a section of illicit romance uh, where you found two different couples Anthony and Cleopatra and also uh, two other people but here you would find illicit romance the river's tent is broken the last leaves of leaf clutch and sink into the wet bank the wind crosses the brown land unheard the names are departed this themes names like in the river Rhine uh, there are the Rhine maiden in the Nibelagen legend of Germany uh, T.S. Eliot supposes that the Thames river also contains Thames names the names are departed, the women are gone, sweet hymns run softly till I end my uh, song from Spencer. The river bears no empty bottles, sandwich papers, silk handkerchiefs, uh, cardboard boxes, cigarette ends or other testimony of summer nights. These are what amorous couples, lovers live on the river bank uh, on a summer night. The names are departed again uh, or other uh, and the friends, the loitering heirs of city directors departed have left no addresses. Uh, the women, the names, and also their amorous partners, the sons of city directors, all of them have left and no addresses are there. Just these wrappers and cardboard boxes and random rubbish. By the waters of Leman, I sat down and wept. Leman is a river in Geneva, Lake Geneva. This actually is the Lake Geneva where T.S. Eliot was taking a rest cure for uh, psychotic breakdown. It's a mental asylum. Sweet themes run softly till I end my song. Sweet themes run softly. For I speak not loud or long. Again, an appeal to the river from Spencer. Citation from Edmund Spencer's Prothalamia. But at my back in a cold blast I hear the rattle of the bonds, the chuckle spread from ear to ear. Again, uh, this is a reference to Andrew Marvel's To My Coy Mistress of Belatedness or what in German is called Nachtradlichkeit. That is a sense that you have uh, come a bit too late. This should have happened uh, slightly early in order to have been Okay, in order to have been, this walk could have been averted. How better things could have been, okay? How beautiful things could have been. A rat crept slowly through the vegetation, dragging its slimy belly on the bank. This is the post-apocalyptic imagery. The only surviving organism is a rat. No lovers, no women, no lovers, no men. Only a rat with its slimy belly is crawling across the slimy bank of the filthy bank of the river Thames. While I was fishing in the dull canal on a winter evening, round behind the gas house, musing upon the king, my brother's wreck. Again, a reference to Fisher King. The Fisher King, I have told you, is from the Grail legend. The Fisher King is the person who is in process of the Holy Grail, but at the same time, he has been wounded. So, he is rendered incapable of doing anything worthwhile. Uh, and because uh, he is wounded in a certain way, that uh, makes it impossible for him to make uh, do anything creative. So all he does is he fishes. And also there is the Christian connotation. Jesus tells Peter who is a fisherman, I will make you a catcher of fish. Okay. Uh, so yeah, the fisher king is the wreck of a king. And on the king, my father's death before him. Uh, the father of the fisher king also was an infertile person. So the central image of Iceland is infertility. People not being able to uh, reproduce. There are no children being born. Uh, there is no religious solace. There is no beauty. There is no goodness. There is no virtue. There is nothing that is worthwhile or fertile in this world which is a wasteland. 
and on the king my father's death before him the fisher king's brother is saying my brother is a wreck and before him our father was also a wreck infertile white bodies naked on the low damp ground and bones cast in a little low dry garret rattled by the rats foot early year to year but at my back from time to time i hear the sound of horns and motors which shall bring sweeney to mrs potter in the spring again a reference to uh, to my coy mistress by andrew marvel uh, in the past i can hear uh, the uh, fluttering wings of time nearing so there is no time for your coyness that's the idea of andrew marvels to my coy mistress the sense of belatedness the sounds of horns and motors i have discussed we have discussed this in class the horns and motors are the uh, sounds of uh, motor cars in the bustling city of london and also it's a reference to uh, the uh, horns of goddess diana who act uh, who rendered actaeon into a deer for having looked upon her while bathing in a river and actaeon as a deer of course is ripped about alive by wolves in the forest the story of diana and actaeon diana of course is the goddess of hunting so the sounds of horns and motors the hunting horns suddenly transmogrify transform into uh, the uh, motor cars in the city of london which shall bring sweeney to mrs potter in the spring but these motor cars have a more mundane more everyday more normal boring function they are going to bring a lover called mr sweeney uh, to his a lady love mrs potter is a normal woman a common person middle class person oh the moon shone bright on mrs potter and on her daughter they washed their feet in soda water so this is a body song a naughty song sung by school children school boys during that time so eliot as we know is in this person high culture with low culture one moment he is dabbling in dante and shakespeare and marvel and the next moment he is dabbling in some kind of a school boys with dt uh as oh savoir dans fa chantant dans les coupoles this is the voice of the uh, children uh, who are singing in the capolla this is a reference to paul verlaine's persifal okay uh, where persifal is uh, listen those are the little children who are singing in the capolla so tweet 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 jug 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 so rudely forced terry you this again is a reference to the rape of philomel who was raped by her brother in law terius and she is rendered into a bird and her sister procne is also rendered into a bird and of course terius is brutally punished yeah, so this is a reference to those birds avian imagery unreal city under the brown fog of a winter noon mr eugenides the smyrna merchant unshaven with a pocket full of currants uh, cif london documents at sight asked me in demotic french to luncheon at the cannon street hotel followed by a weekend at the metropole so this again is a reference to another amoral amorous couple again a homosexual couple he is propositioned by a homosexual person there's a different voice but a narratorial voice whoever that is uh, he do the police in different voices was the original title of the wasteland and this person is accosted by a homosexual person from turkey uh, unreal city london is an unreal city all sorts of people come here like the river themes is a river okay therive khare rubangalde nadi so unreal city under the brown fog of a winter noon from spring summer autumn we have reached winter is winter noon noon time uchayana mr eugenides is a fictional name the smyrna merchant a place called ismir in turkey smyrna is an important space uh, place uh, and he has come he is not shaven uh, he has a beard a stubble and in his pocket he has these currants these dry fruits okay uh, like patani badam kismis uh, cashew this is his business he is a, a importer exporter of dry fruits hmm? he is a slightly moth eaten dirty old man cif customer image file this is a file kept by uh, the customs department in the london port london thoramagathile customs inde oru file aanu customer image file see uh, even a cif customer um, information file also makes its way into the poem so it's a collage of various fragments these fragments i have showed against my ruin cif london documents at site avade thoramagathile the port officers immigration officers will advise you to keep all your documents in site keep your documents in site don't keep them in your pockets so this is a reference to that ask me in demotic french this is slangish bad kind of french because uh, he is from turkey he is not from england he doesn't speak english but uh, french is a kind of global language of sailors and people who are globe trotters to lunch in at the cannon street hotel followed by a weekend at the metropole so cannon street hotel and the metropole are infamous hangouts of uh, same sex couples in london at that time like uh, subhash park in ernakulam has a kind of uh, reputation okay so these two uh, so of course he is being homophobic there is no need for that they are also humans cannon street hotel followed by a week at the metropole so he was propositioned by this particular uh, seller from uh, import exporter from turkey uh, for a homosexual affair at the cannon street hotel and followed by saturday sunday weekend at the metropole another vacation spot 
At the violet hour when the eyes and back turn upward from the desk, violet hour is dusk, like the godhuli hour, the cow dust hour, when the cows go back home. It's a twilight hour, okay? It's very favorite of these rays. And when the eyes and back turn upward from the desk, an office goer, a typist or a secretary at the end of the day, will raise her neck from the work. When the human engine waits, uh, like a taxi throbbing waiting, the human engine is the human machine, okay? It's almost like the human is a machine. Uh, like a taxi throbbing, waiting. The taxi is an important imagery there, okay? Uh, taxis at that time is a carrier of modernity. Athrigada. I, Tyres, is the old prophet who predicted uh, the calamity of Oedipus in the city of Thebes. I, Tyres, is the blind throbbing between two lives. He was cursed to be a woman and then again to be a man, so he was someone who has spent life as both genders. Old man with wrinkled female breast can see at the violet hour, the evening hour that strives homeward and brings the sailor home from sea. The typist home at tea time clears her breakfast, lights her stop and lays out for instance. Out of the window perilously spread her drying combinations, means her garments, inners, touched by the sun's last rays. On the divan are piled at night her bed, stockings, slippers, camisoles and stays. So, uh, this is a description of the humble accommodation of a lady, a working woman in London at that time, a lower middle class lady, okay? Uh, so, this is her accommodation. She lives in a very small space and uh, she has a divan which is her bed at night and she has various clothes which are also uh, laid about all over the place. Uh, so, she is waiting for her lover. Uh, and who is uh, the third person omniscient viewer here? Tyrus is the prophet who has become a uh, man again after spending some time as a woman. Uh, so, he is neither male nor female. He is a hermaphrodite person. Okay. Uh, see the transition from homosexuality to uh, hermaphroditism. So, of course, he is being homophobic. Uh, I, Tyrus, is old man with wrinkled ducks, perceived the scene and foretold the rest. I, too, awaited the expected guest. He, the young man, Carbuncula, arrives. A small house agent's clerk with one bold stare, one of the low on whom assurance sits as a silk hat on a Bradford millionaire. So her lover who is going to come in a taxi is a petty person, is a lowly, average, middle class person. He's not an exalted, sublime, great personality like Zeus or, you know, Oedipus or uh, something like that. He's a very petty person, a lowly person. He's a bank clerk. At the same time, super confident. The new emerging middle class. He's cocky, okay? He thinks he can conquer the world. Everyone is his servant. He's like that, okay? He's a very brash young man with no taste, no character, no class. A classes person, is an elitist. Of course, a taste elitist is an elitist. So it uh, sits uh, like a silk hat on a Bradford millionaire. Bradford is a space in London where this new or rich uh, Putan Manakar used to live. Okay, so this brashness sits on top of this young man like a silk hat, a costly, expensive hat. At that would sit on a Bradford millionaire, a new or rich person. The time is now propitious as he guesses the meal is ended. She is bored and tired, endeavors to engage her in caresses which still are unreproved if undesired. So it's not totally, not totally consensual. Okay, the relationship is not totally consensual, uh, which still are unreproved if undesired. She doesn't desire his physical attention, but she does not reprove him. She doesn't tell him to stop. Very complicated. Okay, uh, flushed and decided, he assaults at once. He's a petty, lowly person. He's a super rascal. Uh, which still are unreproved if undesired, flushed and decided, he assaults at once, exploring hands, encounter no defense, his vanity requires no response, he's a very vain person, he thinks he's some kind of Kamadeva or something like that, and makes a welcome of indifference, the lady is indifferent, he makes a welcome of her indifference, and I, Tiresias, have forsuffered or enacted on this same divan or bed, I who have sat by Thebes below the wall and walked among the lowest of the dead, bestows one final patronizing in case and grobs his way finding the stairs unlit. So who is the omniscient viewer? Third person that is Tyrus is the prophet. He has spent time as man, woman and hermaphrodite and he knows everything what is going to happen, what has happened, what is happening and of course he is blind so he has to grope his way inward. He has no anger, no hatred, no love, nothing for anyone and so he is just nonchalantly going away like the referee in a football match. She turns and looks a moment in the glass hardly aware of her departed lover. So the man is gone, the cocky young bank clerk is left, so the lady is facing some kind of existential pang. What is life? It's an empty glass, she is looking into an empty glass, probably a liquor, alcohol glass. Her brain allows one half-formed thought to pass. So her uh, brain after a long day's work is not in a proper shape to form full-formed thoughts, she only has half-formed thoughts, inquiet, childish thoughts. 
well now that's done and i am glad it's over okay the activity is over uh, when lovely woman stoops to folly this again is from the vicar of wakefield by goldsmith uh, when good women stoop to bad things paces about her room again alone she is having some kind of regrets she smooths her hair with automatic hand unknowingly involuntarily uh, she uh, places her hand over her hair and puts a record on the gramophone to listen to music this music crept by me upon the waters and along the strand up queen victoria street these are places in the city of london o oh, city city i can sometimes hear beside a public bar in lower thames street the pleasant whining of a mandolin and a clatter and a clatter from within where fishermen lounge at noon where the walls of magnus martyr hold in inexplicable splendor of ionian white and gold again classical imagery of the city of london how grand the city is london and all these petty things small things small people things are happening in that grand city of huge cathedrals and mansions and temples and columns and legends what not okay there is a fishmonger's place uh, there is also the grand street called strand there is queen victoria street so the high and low mingle with each other the river spreads oil and tar the barges drift with the turning tide red sails white to leeward swing on the heavy spar the barges wash drifting logs down greenwich ridge past the isle of dogs this again is a reference to the rhine names So T S Eliot supposes that, like the Rhine River in Germany, London Thames also has some names. They are singing. Okay, uh, the Rhine is compared to Thames. The Rhine has gold. Thames might also have gold. It's a chant of the names from Wagner's opera. Vela la 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 la, vela la 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 la, vela la la la. This is from uh, the Rhine Gold by Wagner. The chanting of the Rhine maidens' names. Sukul jala kaniga. Elizabeth and Lester, two other people were also on the Thames once upon a time, a different time, a different voices. Panda wonder galatha, the greatest English queen, the Virgin Queen Elizabeth and her lover, uh, were uh, you know sailing on the same river. Uh, beating oars, the stern was formed, a gilded shell, red and gold, the brisk swell rippled both shores. When they were sailing, the river was gold. Maybe when Antony and Cleopatra were sailing, the river was gold. When Ganges was there, the river was gold. All the rivers are connected. but they are fragmented or lives are connected at the same time separated this was another time elizabeth and lester beating oars the stern was formed the stern is a section of the boat a gilded shell red and gold the brisk swell rippled both shores a golden wave touched both the shores of the river thames southwest wind carried downstream the peal of bells white towers these are from various historical narratives of their illicit romance between uh, elizabeth and her lover lester who was a catholic so the spanish emperor was interested in that vela la 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 vela la 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 again the chanting of the synonyms the sound the ululation okay kurva trams and dusty trees highbury bormi richmond and kew this again is a different voice a reference to dante's purgatorio purgatory trishangu sargam there he finds a woman uh, the wife of a, a nobleman called nello she did not go to hell or to paradise she went to a purgatorio she says that siena made me and another place unmade me so it's a reference to her highbury bore me richmond and kew undid me i was made by highbury i was uh, undid by richmond and kew kew is a place where there is a famous garden in london kew gardens by richmond i raised my knees to paint on the floor of a narrow canoe this again is a erotic imagery okay my feet are at moorgate and my heart under my feet feet and the at uh, my moorgate in the varnal moorgate is a gate of london london is a city city is once upon a time in medieval early modern times cities had gates like kerke kota parnyar kota so moorgate is a, a gate of london and my heart under my feet and her heart was under my feet this is a particular position she had taken after the event he wept after uh, the uh, after the copulation the man wept he was not a good person but at least he had a decency to cry after it he cried he promised a new start they are a couple so he promised uh, we will have a new start okay my dear my darling we will have a new start i may no comment she did not say anything what should i resent she had no resentment okay she was a docile humble woman with uh, no opinions of her own okay uh, this is eliot's uh, coruscating withering attack on Uh, relationships human relationships in the apocalyptic world there is no uh, companionship there is only loneliness uh, oh margate sands i can connect nothing with nothing so this again is a place where uh, eliot's own wife vivian was seduced by another legendary seducer bertrand russell a great philosopher a greater man than eliot he has written a poem called mr apollinax on this particular incident it happened in margate sands a vacation spot in england on margate sands i can connect nothing with nothing the broken fingernails of dirty hands my people humble people who expect nothing la la to carthage then i came this again is from the autobiography the confessions of saint augustine 
uh, he also was infamously uh, an unchaste person and also a clergyman also a saint saint augustine an unchaste person but he said god give me chastity but not yet so to Carthage then I came. The Carthage is a port city uh, on the northern side of Africa where today Libya is. To Carthage then I came. Uh, burning, 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 oh Lord. This again is from the fire sermon of Lord Buddha. Lord Buddha said, I cast this into fire, I cast eyes into fire, I cast ears into fire, I cast tongues into fire, I cast skin into fire. So this is the fire sermon where Lord Buddha negates all kind of sensual experience and sensuality as causes that block nirvana. Here, of course, there is no nirvana possible, no moksha possible, no salvation, no solace possible in the wasteland. Uh, oh Lord, thou pluckest me out. Oh Lord, thou pluckest burning. This again is the prayer of uh, Saint Augustine. So I am burning, I am in the fire. Who plucks me out? My God, my Lord. My Lord plucks me out of this fire. Okay, so that's the uh, uh, third section. Uh, this is the fire sermon. Okay, it's a very brutal and very intense session. Okay, where Eliot castigates everything. Thank you so much for joining.